Hello, this is Jenny Inker, Assistant Professor in the Virginia Commonwealth University College of Health Professions Department of Gerontology. And in this 10-minute presentation, we're going to have a quick look at some ethical responses to the COVID-19 outbreak. The learning objectives for this brief presentation are to reflect on what it means to be an ethical person. Also, to understand the three parts of a caring response that all ethical people use being professional, being competent, and being accountable. And finally, applying a caring response to dealing with COVID-19. So what does it mean to be an ethical person? It means that we engage both our thoughts and our feelings when we're making decisions about what is the right thing to do. You might be surprised to hear that because you might think that we ought to remain entirely rational and not rely at all on our feelings. But in truth, our feelings are a really important barometer for us about whether something feels right or feels wrong. And so we do want to be guided both by our feelings and our thoughts when we're considering what a moral course of action would be. And when I say moral, I simply mean, what would the right thing to do be? And a great way to help ourselves understand that is by asking ourselves, what would a good human being do in this situation? People who are ethical also reflect on their options. They stand back from a situation, they don't rush into it, and they consider all of the options that might be available to them. They'll also generate options and be very creative in trying to identify possible solutions. And ethical people will commit to doing the right thing even when it's hard to do that. And the goal always, in terms of being an ethical person, is to uphold human dignity, our own dignity and the dignity of others. So let's have a look at a caring response so we can understand how that might help us to do the right thing. A caring response is a concept in ethics that frames our actions in three ways. First, it guides us in how to be professional. And by that, I mean how we can navigate our relationships with others so that we're friendly and caring while also maintaining appropriate professional boundaries. People want to know that we care about them and therefore we need to find ways to show that we care about people. And that includes things like listening carefully to people, and asking them questions, and then responding to their answers to our questions. We also want to remember that we are all whole people. We have a bio, psycho, social, and spiritual dimension, each and every one of us. We are far more than our physical body. We're far more than our physical safety. And so we want to care for the entire person, which means that we need to know not just how people are physically, but what they're thinking and how they're feeling. We want to be sure that we maintain our professional boundaries with people so that we don't overstep. We also want to be competent. A caring response calls upon us to work within the limits of our professional knowledge and ability and to remain up to date in our fields and up to date with any important information about our fields or that we may need to use to help other people. Being competent also means that we're willing and able to call upon the expertise of others. When we recognize that a situation is beyond the limits of our own competence, we can draw on the competence of others and work together in multi-professional teams. And finally, a caring response means that we're accountable to others. It means that we take responsibility for our actions and that we communicate what we have done. We don't hide away and hope people won't notice, but we actively engage and we explain ourselves and our decisions. So how can we use a caring response with COVID-19? First of all, it's important for us to remain professional, but we also need to show that we care. And in order to show others we care, we need to ask them what they need, what they need to be okay, 
and what they need to feel okay. And we need to be prepared for the answers of others to surprise us. We may believe we know what they need. In other words, we may think people need mainly or only their physical safety, when in fact people may tell us, I also need to feel socially connected. So although I do want to be physically safe, I also don't want to become socially isolated. We also need to limit our own tendency to self-disclose. In a situation like the COVID-19 outbreak, we're all very worried and unsettled and uncertain. And everybody is in this boat together. But when we're trying to help somebody else, there's a limit to how helpful our self-disclosures can be. In other words, while we want everyone to recognize that we are in the same boat together and that we do understand each other, we don't want our focus to shift away from the person that we're serving or trying to assist onto ourselves. So we need to be careful to whom we disclose our anxieties and our fears, because we don't want to unnecessarily upset others whom we're trying to help. We can also use our technical competence to deliver a caring response to COVID-19. And it's important for us to understand the limits of our knowledge and our skill. We should be following public health guidance from experts and guiding other people to sources of expert public health guidance about COVID-19. We should be relying on evidence-based information about the disease and about the possible ways of responding to it. And we should be encouraging other people to seek out those evidence-based sources. And finally, we want to be accountable when responding to people who are dealing with COVID-19 related issues. We need to take responsibility for both our words and our actions. And it's helpful in this regard for us to remind ourselves and others that we are all in this together, that this is not about stigmatizing a group or groups of people or believing that some groups can be sacrificed for the good of others, this is a time when we want to ask that question, what would a good human being do? And then behave accordingly and take responsibility for what we say and do. We also need to communicate often. And by communicate, it's important to realize that that's both listening and talking. While we want to communicate so that others know what we're doing, we also need to make sure that we have learned what we need to from others, that we have asked them what they need, and we've taken their views into account. So see communication as this bi-directional process of listening and talking, of asking questions and responding to questions, and reflecting back what we believe we have understood another to say. That is it for this short presentation. If you have a thought or a question, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me at inkerjl at vcu.edu.